The Pittsburgh Steelers, beyond question, are one of the truly marquee franchises in the National Football League. Here is a team that's made it to eight Super Bowls. Here's a team that's won six Super Bowl championships. This is a team with a national following. When the Pittsburgh Steelers are doing well, the NFL is better off for 2013 definitely didn't go well for the Pittsburgh Steelers as I anticipated before the season began. I thought it was going to be another mediocre middle-of-the-road season for the team, and it ultimately was. I will say this, though, is that I was very impressed by the coaching job of Mike Tomlin in 2013 because this Pittsburgh Steelers team had no business, and I mean no business at all, even having any delusions of sniffing a possible wild card spot in the AFC playoffs. Absolutely none. They got off to a horrible start. They looked terrible. They looked like they were going to be a team with a top five pick. And somehow they found a way to kind of piece it together, to come to form at least a little bit, and make a run of it and make a season out of it. And that's why I think Mike Tomlin arguably is one of the premier head coaches in all of the National Football League. But now the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think, find themselves in a bit of a crossroads heading into 2014. Here's a team that could go one or two directions. The past couple of seasons, they've kind of toiled in mediocrity a little bit. Are they going to take that step up and become one of the you know, top franchises in the AFC? Or are they due to take a big step back and become one of the bottom tier teams in the AFC? I think 2014 will be a strong indicator of which direction the Steelers organization is going to go in in the next couple of seasons. Now, they didn't get too busy in the offseason in terms of making big, splashy moves, uh, but they maybe necessarily didn't need to. Um, that's never really been Pittsburgh's style in terms of big, lavish spending in free agency. Uh, they did go out and get Mike Mitchell from the Carolina Panthers. Um, who they assume will be an upgrade at safety. God knows they needed an upgrade anywhere pretty much in their secondary, and safety was definitely a position. They bring in LeGarrette Blunt, take him away from the New England Patriots to be that complement, that backup to Le'Veon Bell. Now you've got two big physical backs for Pittsburgh, and Mike Tomlin and his staff have to love that proposition. They bring in Lance Moore to bring in some depth in the wide receiving core, especially important because they lost Emmanuel Sanders in free agency to, to the Denver Broncos. They cut Lamar Woodley. They drafted outside linebacker who will be playing inside at the NFL in that 3-4 Ryan Shazier from Ohio State. You know, they, they made some moves. I don't know how much better they got, but I don't know that they necessarily got worse either. Now, heading into 2014, what will be some of the strengths of the Steelers team? Running game. That's going to be a big strength. Second round, run, second year, excuse me, running back Le'Veon Bell at times showed that he could be a three-down bell cow back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now you bring in a LeGarrette Blunt. This is a team that should be able to run the ball effectively and consistently all season long. Obviously, when you talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and their defense, you talk about their linebacking core. And their linebacking core, while maybe not as great as some of the teams in the past, is still the strength of that defense and is one of the strengths of this team. There's no question about it. In terms of question marks, I think they have two glaring question marks. And they've been glaring question marks for years. And for some reason, I don't understand, frankly, why the Pittsburgh Steelers seem so adverse to really diving all in to try and fix these two question mark areas because these two question mark areas keep being big reasons over the past couple of seasons why they don't do more and why they find themselves out of the playoffs. I'm talking about the secondary and the offensive line. The secondary is old and bad in a bad way. Polamalu seen his better days. You bring in Mike Mitchell, and you know you could sit there and say Mike Mitchell had a great season in Carolina, and he had a good season in Carolina, but this is also the same Mike Mitchell that was a huge reach years back for Al Davis and the Oakland Raiders when they drafted him in the second round, who really didn't do much during his time in Oakland. At corner, they're old and bad, and they lack young depth, and overall, frankly, they just lack talent. And it's been a problem for the Steelers for years, and they still fail to address it, and I don't know why. And they really effectively failed to address it again in the 2014 draft and in this offseason. And then the offensive line. Even with first-round picks like Pouncey and DeCastro on the inside, this is a team that's still questionable at best to say at the two tackle positions. You know, you got to protect Big Ben a little bit better. And they've got to do a better job of opening up holes more consistently in the running game, making things a little easier for Le'Veon Bell and LeGarrette Blunt. 
And I think the past couple of seasons, the Steelers' offensive line has been their big Achilles heel on offense. And I expect it to potentially be the same again in 2014. I don't understand these glaring areas of need over the past few years, and yet the Pittsburgh Steelers seem to not understand, as good of an organization as they are, that these are the two biggest hindrances to them being a very competitive and contending team in the AFC and perhaps all of the National Football League. Now looking ahead to the schedule this season, they've got the AFC South, the NFC South, then their AFC Conference games, they've got the Jets and the Chiefs. I think one interesting stretch of schedule for them is a three-game homestand, if you will, week seven to nine, where they've got Houston, Indianapolis, and Baltimore. If the Steelers want to get back into the fold, if they want to be taken seriously, if they want to have a shot at making the playoffs, I think they've got to win two, if not all three of those home games in that stretch. You can win two of them, especially if one of them's Baltimore, and that might not be a bad thing if you lost maybe to Indianapolis. But if you can find a way to beat Houston at home, then beat Indianapolis at home, and beat Baltimore at home, you would have taken care of business at home right in the middle of the season, three weeks in a row, gotten a divisional win out of it. you got to feel pretty good about your chances heading into the second half of the season. Now, the keys to success, besides doing well in that middle part of the stretch, they must avoid the slow start that plagued them last year. They got off to a horrible start, and they were playing catch-up all year long. The Steelers have got to come out of the gate a little bit stronger. they got to be you know, in rhythm more effectively, more quickly than they were in 2013. Their secondary needs to play better, period. They can't be such a weakness of the defensive unit. They still will be, but they can't be such a glaring drop-off and weakness compared to the linebacking core and even to a lesser degree the defensive line. Uh, they need the offensive line to play better. They need more protection for Big Ben. They need to open up more consistent holes in the running game for LeGarrette Blunt and Le'Veon Bell. They need somebody opposite Antonio Brown to step up at wide receiver and be that complementary number two weapon. Um, in terms of my prediction for the Steelers, I really, I really don't know what to say about them because I think they're a mediocre team. I think they're getting old in bad places in bad ways. I really don't like, frankly, much of what they did in the offseason. I have a tremendous amount of respect for the organization. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Mike Tomlin, who, again, I think from a pure coaching standpoint, is one of the elite guys at what he does in all of the National Football League. But at some point in time, that's just not enough. And the fact is, I just don't think this is all that good of a football team. I wouldn't be totally surprised if the Pittsburgh Steelers did any better than 8-8 eight eight this season. And that's kind of what I expect them to do. Be a middle-of-the-road team, have weeks where they look like world beaters and can beat anybody, and then have other weeks where they lose bad games to bad teams. I think they'll end up finishing again 8-8 eight eight this year, and they'll finish third in the AFC North, and they'll head into next offseason with some serious questions about what they're going to do with Big Ben long-term and what the future direction of the organization is going to be.